on everyone thank you so much for watching today my name is savannah and if you're new here welcome to the channel thanks so much for stopping by we are back in planet zoo in hakea wildlife park which is our desert themed zoo that was really kind of formed because of the australian dlc but we've kind of kept it going because i really like the aesthetic uh, of this park all the colors and things like that we're starting off here with the kind of main driving point behind the build, which is going to be this front facade of the indoor cassowary habitat that we're building. So I found a reference picture. I mean, I feel like all of my builds, all of my stories about my builds start the same way. I found a reference picture and then I kind of built something. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of exactly what I did uh, with this one as well. I found a reference picture that had these big hexagonal patterns on the front of them. Um, and unfortunately in Planet Zoo, the pieces just didn't exist to make it exactly how I wanted it to be. Um, it, it, pertaining to the picture, you know, to, to duplicate it directly. Because some of their pieces, like the hexagons, would wrap around the corner of the square or the rectangle, whatever it is that we're building. Um, so unfortunately I couldn't do that. But I was able to make it work with just these really large panels of glass and then the um, painted wooden planks as the border. So I think it comes out really well. There is zero function to this. There is absolutely no point in having this on the front of the building other than it just looks really cool. In the reference picture I was looking at, it was actually an office building, I think. So behind the glass, you could actually see through and see different um, levels of the building where, you know, different offices were and, and stuff like that. So it looked really cool in the reference picture as far as like an actual building but ours is purely aesthetic it is purely just for the looks of it so what I end up doing is actually just finishing up this outside part with all the decorative bits and the glass and then putting uh, white or cream colored art shapes on the inside just to prevent you from being able to see through it right because it's just it's just a big empty box so I wanted to make sure that we couldn't actually see all the way through it and then it kind of gives it a cool like frosty kind of look because the um, I guess is frosty the right word even I don't I don't think that's the right adjective but it's what I'm gonna go with for now because it's all that's coming to mind uh, because I, I set the art shapes back a little bit so there's a little bit of gap between the glass and the art shape so it looks looks a little bit frosty I guess if you have a better adjective let me know but right now frosty is all that's coming to mind um, we did actually build this partially on stream as well so I started this first bit because I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna come out and if I was going to like it so I started this first bit with just the big main facade piece and then moved over and started building this on stream for those of you that don't know we do stream every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time except for this morning if you're watching this live um, I've released this video Sunday morning because I won't be able to go live um, we'll be streaming tomorrow morning instead though so Monday morning the 26th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time so if you guys have any questions want to let me know what you thought about the bill just want to hang out and chit chat we have a ton of fun uh, streaming Planet Zoo on Sunday mornings but this week Monday morning um, so come hang out I'd be happy to see you guys there I always love seeing uh, new faces, old faces, all the same faces, you know, just love seeing you guys there. I originally started building this with the aquatic paneling in mind. So that wood paneling that you see me using, um, it's one of my favorite pieces. Um, I get asked that kind of often, like what my favorite build pieces are, or what my favorite animal is. My favorite build piece uh, in the game really honestly would probably be the Australian pack things uh, just for the sake of the color of the wood and just the aesthetic that it has I love I love the feel that all those pieces have however the aquatic wood paneling wall set is a very very close second or or up there rather because it's flexi colored um, and because I love the the simplicity of it as well so I end up using those around part of it and then switching out I think the left wall um, for some of the Australian uh, wood paneling wall sets the ones that have kind of like the bluish tint to them um, just to, to mix it up a little bit give it a little bit more um, variation in the sides of the wall um, and then, I mean, overall, it was a fairly easy habitat to make. The biggest pain in the butt, honestly, for this one was the inside. One, 
You guys know how much I hate interiors. I absolutely dislike doing interior builds, uh, but I wanted to make sure that this was an indoor habitat, given that we are in a desert biome and everything outside is fairly like dry and just deserty feeling. And the cassowaries are a jungle species. So even though they are from Australia, they live in very tropical areas of Australia. So I wanted to make sure that we put them indoors somewhere where we could accurately uh, uh, recreate their environment that they would need. Um, now I know in zoos, uh, many, many zoos across the world keep them outdoors just in the climate, like the the San Diego Safari Park, the, the sister park to the San Diego Zoo, does have cassowaries and they're just out in an open enclosure um, and the climate here is nothing like it is in Australia. So I'm sure that they do just fine. Um, I just wanted to add an indoor habitat to this park because we actually haven't done an indoor habitat yet. So far we have koalas, we have ostriches and kangaroos, and then we have the dingoes and the African wild dog, none of which are indoor habitats. They're all open natural habitats. At it, so I wanted to make sure we kind of put some variation in this park. Um, I felt like it needed another building, another large structure. So that's kind of why I went with an indoor habitat uh, for this one. Speaking of our little friends, the cassowaries, I got lots and lots of comments during stream telling me how much they look like little dinosaurs. And I totally agree. They look like little mini dinosaurs. Uh, and that's not totally coincidental. So while all birds are descendant from dinosaurs, the cassowary is actually thought to be more similar to ancient dinosaurs than most other birds. They have really large bodies and large claws. And then of course they are flightless, but also have those helmet-like structures on top of their heads. Uh, they're actually called casks, uh, which many dinosaurs are believed to have had. So it makes them uh, much more similar, I guess, than other species of birds. I pulled up a little bit of information from the San Diego Zoo, actually, that they have on the uh, on the southern cassowary. So we'll just kind of chat about them for a little bit. Uh, the cassowary has black satin-like feathers on its neck, body, and tail. These drooping, shimmering feathers are similar to feathers of emus and ostriches. So if you look at them, they kind of look shaggy, not like parrots or chickens or, or lots of other birds. Their feathers, like I said, are kind of like shaggy. They kind of droop and hang off of their body. Uh, and that is something that they share with uh, emus and ostriches as well. They kind of have this, this shaggy look to them. Uh, it is closely related to the emu and most distantly the ostrich. Uh, so their closest relative is going to be the emu. And hopefully I'm saying that right, because when I did a previous video in the past, I was saying emu, but emu is how I was told to say it, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Trying to improve, always trying to improve. Uh, but these flightless birds belong to a group of birds called ratites, which are uh, adapted for walking and running rather than flying. So that's something that emus, cassowaries, and ostriches are all gonna have in common is that they can't fly. They are very, very big, uh, much too large to fly. So they would not be able to get off the ground at all. And in fact, if you've ever seen one in person, uh, you may have heard me mention it. Uh, we're working with baby emus at work currently. And if you've had a chance to get up close and actually look at what their wings look like, their wings are pathetic. They're so small. They're so useless. Uh, they're actually quite funny. They just kind of hang off either side of their body um, and do nothing. So they still technically have wings, but they are not doing anything with them whatsoever. And actually, even though they're built for walking and running, the at least the baby emus at work are quite clumsy. Let me tell you, they run into everything, run over everything, kind of they kind of act like they don't really know how to use their legs. Now, granted, they are babies, so they're, you know, they're learning. They're only a couple months old, but that was one thing that surprised me because emus are not something that I've worked with in the past. These, the ones that we're working with at work right now is my first experience uh, being around emus. Uh, and not that emus are cassowaries, but they're what I'm comparing them to because it's the only thing that I have experience with. Uh, I was quite surprised with how clumsy they are. It's like they, they're so top heavy that if anything kind of pushes them off, they, they don't really know how to recover quite right. 
Uh, it's it's a strange thing to, to kind of describe. At least the ones that I'm working with are, qu are quite clumsy. They're pretty fun to, to watch run around, though, and they make really, really cute, like, little beeping noises. Um, so they're a fun animal to work with and, and quite, quite funny. But as I kind of briefly mentioned before, southern cassowaries are found in the rainforests of northeastern Australia. So not going to be out in the open outback, uh, kind of like our zoo is representing being out in like the the main desert part of Australia they're going to be in the rainforests but they're also found on the island of New Guinea as well as some of the Indonesian islands generally the cassowaries are associated with dense tropical rainforests but the southern variety of cassowaries may also be found in like lowland forest savannas forest edges and riverbanks and even mangroves and fruit plantations cassowaries are also considered to be omnivores so they do eat things like fruits but also snails, some fungi, uh, as well as when they, they need some extra protein in their diet, they have been known to feed on small mammals or reptiles, uh, regardless if they hunt and kill them themselves or find them uh, uh, as scavengers. So they are omnivores, they eat both plant and animal material. They'll use their feet to score the forest floor for a meal, so if they're looking for bugs or things like that. Uh, being largely dependent on fruit, they need diverse forest habitat with plants that supply food for them all year long. One study in Queensland actually revealed that the southern cassowaries consume fruits of at least 75 different types of forest plants. So when food becomes scarce, cassowaries will raid gardens, orchards, and commercial crops like bananas and mulberries. Currently, cassowaries are listed as being vulnerable on the IUCN red list of threatened species and are considered endangered under Australia's federal law. In Australia, the birds numbered about 2,500 in 2010, while mature cassowaries living in New Guinea are estimated between 6,000 and 15,000 adults. The southern cassowaries declined in Australia as a result of deforestation and development while hunting posed the greatest threat to them in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. And then at the very bottom it says here, the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance is proud to share this unusual birds with their visitors out at the safari park so people can learn about them and appreciate their flightless existence. I think that's funny that they classify their flightless existence. Uh, but yeah, so just knowing about these guys and just remembering, you know, it mentioned some of their threats are deforestation and development, although you can't directly do anything about development uh, in Australia yourself, you certainly can take steps to help things like deforestation and habitat fragmentation by reducing, reusing, recycling, all the stuff we've talked about on the channel before. Um, but I think these guys are are super fascinating. Um, they're funny little animals to watch run around and, and in game they make some funny noises. If you guys have any fun cassowary um, facts, please do let me know. I'm always interested to learn more about them. You guys have been phenomenal down in the comments letting me know uh, of facts that I missed or information that I was not aware of. Um, so I, I really enjoy that. So before we wrap up and get back to talking about the actual build, uh, a little bit of fun facts. So it says cassowaries are actually great swimmers. The cask of a cassowary, so that helmet thing on its head, uh, is made of a tough elastic foam-like material. And then lastly, it says that only the ostrich is heavier than the southern cassowary. So the southern cassowary sounds like it is the second largest bird. Uh, so that's pretty cool, pretty fascinating. And as we were talking about our little cassowary friends, we have moved on to what is effectively the most annoying part of this whole build, even more annoying even more annoying than the interior build, uh, which I don't do very much of because of how much I dislike interiors. However, the dirt. So we, uh, well, I say we, on stream, I was trying to decide because I wanted this to be a very tropical feeling habitat, right? Because we just talked about how cassowaries are from the rainforest in Australia. So I wanted it to have a very dark colored ground. But the problem is being in a desert biome, the terrain paints don't go dark. You can only get the kind of sandy colored terrain paint that you see here. In fact, what the ground is painted with is the dark colored dirt and that's as dark as it gets. So I made the decision to go ahead and utilize the mulch and you can see here, I did cut most of it out. That little transition there was me cutting out a lot of the placing because it took me quite a while. I actually flip it upside down 
um, and I never really use the mulch right side up and it's because the bottom side of the mulch is actually really flat and it, it clips together better. Um, it doesn't have kind of weird lines and things like that. If I flip it upside down and put it together, it comes out more like a flat surface like I wanted it to. And we did test this with the cassowaries. We do go ahead and put them in the enclosure and make sure that they can walk all over. The keepers can get all over. They can still utilize and clean and care for the habitat. But the dark colored dirt just makes it look a lot more tropical, especially when we go and get all the plants in and everything. It just, it gives it the effect that I really wanted it to have. Um, so here we are now kind of throwing in the cassowaries. That was right after we got done with the dirt. Like I said, I wanted to make sure that they could actually use it. And then we're going to move on to the inside. Now I did struggle quite a bit with the plants. And in fact, we kind of placed down some foliage and then remove some and redo it. I have a really bad habit of kind of utilizing too many different plants, I think. And it kind of looks chaotic and some of the plants don't go together. And this is only only my speculation because sometimes I'll be uh, building a habitat and going with all the plants and things and kind of throwing them where I think that they look good and then taking a step back and going you know what it just looks it looks like chaos it doesn't look like it was a planted planned out habitat and that's kind of how I wanted this one to look I didn't really want it to look like an overgrown wild habitat uh, that you would find, you know, just if you walked into the rainforest of Australia. I wanted it to look tropical, but I wanted it to look like planned tropical so that the viewpoints were nice. You could see where the cassowaries walked on certain uh, paths back and forth and things like that. So in the end, I do think we kind of accomplished that, but it did take me a couple different tries. Another thing that I do with this habitat, and I don't get to do it on stream, unfortunately, because the image that I was trying to use, I actually found out was a bit too large. So after we place these rocks in as the main backdrop, behind that, I find an image of the Australian jungle and kind of put that as a mural on the back wall. So as you are looking into the habitat, you're kind of immersed into what it would look like in the wild. Um, something that's really easy to do with the billboards in game, right? So I had my own image, imported that into the billboard, and that's where I was saying it was a bit too large of an image. So I had to, I had to shrink it down um, and change the image size so that it would, it would show up on the billboard in game. But that way we can have kind of a false backdrop where it makes you look like, uh, makes it look like rather that the cassowaries are in their natural habitat. So I think that that's pretty cool and a really, really useful thing for indoor habitats specifically. Uh, not that we'll be doing a lot more indoor habitats uh, because they're not my favorite, <laughs> but it worked out really, really well for this one. Now, moving on to some of the trim on this, um, I do end up changing this later on. <clears throat> excuse me, I, I take a look at it again and I'm not quite happy with how it looks. I end up using some of the painted wooden beams to kind of frame it a bit better. And then some of those temple pieces, like the temple pillars that kind of look like, um, I mean, they do look like concrete, but they look like a false facade concrete uh, pillar. So I use those to kind of wrap the windows in um, or kind of frame out the, the viewing area for the cassowaries. And then when we do put, because uh, right now I haven't finished that giant box on the ceiling, <laughs> uh, I do put the art shapes on the, um, on the roof as well, the roof of the inside. So then all those shadows aren't coming through. However, because because it is an indoor habitat, one thing that I do really struggle with, I feel like this whole video is like, and another thing I struggle with, one thing I struggle with uh, when it comes to indoor habitats, uh, and it's because I dislike them so much, so there's a lot that I struggle with. But anyway, something else that I struggle with is the lighting. So the lighting in Planet Zoo is great. I love the lighting. But when you build something indoors, you take away all that lighting because you take away all the potential for shadows and bright spots and things like that. So I end up, we're going to flat roof this building because I made a, uh, just disaster of a shape. Uh, it's nowhere near uh, what would be easy to roof with sloped roofs. So we end up flat roofing it, but then I end up going back and doing a couple, uh, actually not a couple, just one like L-shaped skylight. Uh, and doing that so that there is some sort of light in the actual habitat. 
Um, and it, it makes it look, in my opinion, so much better when you have some shadows and some interest when you're looking in the habitat. Um, so I'm really, really happy with that. Another thing that we kind of experiment with this, and I did not build it completely on my own. I used the um, air conditioning units from the workshop and I totally forget who they're by. I'm so sorry, but you guys will recognize them when you see them. If you've been on the, the Planet Zoo workshop, they are widely used by a lot of different creators because they are so perfectly done. Um, but I used the... Um, air conditioning units on the ceiling and then run a little bit of ducting underneath and use the mist or the fog i think it's mist technically in game the vfx to make it look like the habitat is being misted and that it has some sort of humidity to it so yeah just finishing up the skylight here and then going underneath to add those misters like i was talking about it was actually a suggestion from somebody in chat on our stream to do the mister so thank you so much i totally forget uh what the name was but it was somebody in chat that suggested that we do that and it was a very good suggestion it turned out really really nice uh, this sunroof is just pretty simple um, I'm just framing it with another one of my favorite pieces from the Australia pack those metal beams uh, and I think it turns out really really nice so before I go, there is uh, just, you know, 15-ish minutes, 10-ish minutes left on the speed build. It is a bit of a longer one. Um, but before I go, I wanted to thank you guys so, so much. Uh, I feel like I should... I should honestly thank you guys every single video because of how phenomenal you are, but we are like nine or eight subscribers away from 7,000 people. Do you guys know how insane that is? Do you know how crazy when I started making videos, I, I mean, I'm still shocked that people even want to watch me in the first place, but 7,000 of you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> So I just want to say thank you so much uh, as of as I'm recording this right now. Like I said, I think we're like eight or nine subscribers away from 7,000 and I'm so excited about it. I couldn't be happier. I'm having so much fun making videos and streaming for you guys. So it definitely, definitely is super, super appreciated. So definitely want to make sure that I don't forget to say thank you ever um, because the 7,000 of you uh, that are subscribed uh, is only because of you quite literally uh, we wouldn't have that number underneath the channel name if there weren't 7,000 of you that uh, decided to hit that button uh, and only one of them is my mom so uh, the rest of you <laughs> are real subscribers so thank you so so much for watching and enjoying the content and just hanging out with me and being here so definitely much more to come um, I am going to sign off just a bit early. I don't know if you've been able to hear it a couple times uh, through the voice over my, my doggos have uh, whined slash yawn. They're reminding me uh, very strongly right now that it is like two minutes past the normal time that they get fed and therefore they're starving and they're going to die. Does anybody else have pets like that? My animals, man, I'm such a routine person. So I do the same things every single day. I go to work at a certain time come home at a certain time you know we go on our walks or our runs and then you know I'm on the computer they're hanging out with me uh, but that just means that if I miss it if I'm late by even a couple minutes uh, they're like excuse me hello mom uh, gonna you know gonna die emaciated over here you know as the non-spoiled dogs that they actually are of course of course I don't spoil my dogs but uh, they're reminding me that they're very very hungry so I'm gonna hop off here and feed them uh, not that you guys needed to know why I was leaving but just felt the need to tell you because I know there's a lot of animal lovers in the chat but until next time guys just as a reminder one last time we are going to be streaming tomorrow morning if you're watching this live it'll be Monday the 26th at 9 a.m pacific standard time and I so hope to see all of you guys there and in addition to that so hope to see you guys all in the next video I don't actually know what the next video is going to be at this moment in time um, but hopefully I'll figure it out <laughs> and it'll be something great but for now just enjoy the rest of the speed build there are some cinematics at the very end if you haven't already do consider subscribing it really helps out the channel and you can keep up with what we are doing uh, and leave a like if you did enjoy because that also helps out the channel all that fun YouTube stuff is just just so appreciated and I can't thank you guys enough but until next time I will talk at you in the next one bye